no cake carving and no internal supports needed. Finally, thanks to this fantastic new piece of innovative baking equipment by Molly Robbins called the Creature Creator. Now on this particular one, I'm using the sitting down mold. This is a brand new product guys, and I'm sure Molly would really appreciate it if you would help spread the word about her products. There are two molds available, the sitting down mold and the laying down mold. And currently I have three tutorials completely free on my YouTube channel using both. So I'm going to take you through everything step by step like I always do. These are both the equivalent to an eight inch cake. So this is like having two eight inch cakes. However, they were so, so easy and quick to make compared to when you have to cake carve. Happy baking guys, and let's make a start. So in this kit, this is what it will look like. Now I have the sitting down mold here. It comes with a couple of tutorials and a basic user guide. Extremely well packaged. And as mentioned, this is available from Monday the 6th of May. However, you can pre-order this item now. Start by greasing your mould with some butter or margarine. I have also learned after using these moulds a couple of times that if you add a small amount of flour after you have greased it, it will help prevent the cake from sticking. Here I am using my classic Victoria sponge recipe and it makes the perfect amount for both of the moulds, so the sitting down mould and the laying down mould. I will leave a link for this for you in the description below this video. Simply fill both sides of the mould to the top and then you want to place this in the oven at 170 degrees centigrade for approximately 50 minutes. This cake has been left to cool down and has also been released from the mould. Then taking a sharp knife simply cut off where it will have domed slightly. Now we need to sandwich these together so I've taken one half out of the mould and just made up some of my buttercream recipe. If you choose to use my buttercream recipe I will leave a link for that in the description below the video but make three batches. That will be enough to both fill your cakes, crumb coat them and finally pipe on that beautiful fur. Once your cake is covered, simply pick up the other half and place it directly on top. We will then be able to release the rest of the cake from the mould. We now want to place this on a cake board with some baking parchment on there so that we can completely crumb coat it and place it in the fridge. Remember, you need to bake two of these cakes. Even though we're not covering this cake with fondant, by crumb coating the actual cake, when you place it in the fridge, all of that grease from the butter is actually protecting the cake from the air. It's the air that dries cakes out. So if you do this method, it just helps your cake keep for longer. Simply cover both of the cakes that you have baked and place them directly in the fridge. Whilst these are going lovely and cool, we're going to make a start on that beautifully decorated cake drum. In order to cover a 16 inch square cake drum, you will need on average 1.25 kilogram of fondant. I have chosen to roll mine in between these five millimeter spaces. So this helps keep the fondant the same thickness throughout. And the cake drum has just been brushed down with some cooled down boiled water. Simply drape over your fondant, smooth it out with a smoother and cut off any excess. Whilst my fondant is still soft, I want to add a visual guide where the quilted blanket is going to go. So the, here I have a 12 inch square cake tin base. You can always use a board and just using a sharp knife, simply place a small indentation into the fondant. 
I now want to add some indentations to get a rough idea of where the bears are actually going to go. Just because I'm going to be adding some fondant grass first before I actually make the bears. So for this, I'm just using a large round circle cutter and placing that directly into the soft fondant. We can then start to actually decorate this drum. So these are the sort of guides that you want to achieve just to help you get everything in the right place. For the quilting effect, I am using a couple of impression mats by Katie Sue and also a embossed rolling pin. Now you don't need the embossed effect, you can just cut out single squares. But I thought if they are more embossed, it just gives it a much more better effect. So I'll just show you how to use these mats if you've never used them before. I like to cover mine with a small amount of icing sugar. Place on top your rolled out fondant. This is the new beautiful Cassis by Renshaws. And then just go over it with a rolling pin. I will then tip this the other way around and gently pull away the mould. For the squares, I'm actually using this Click Sticks cutter. It's great for Minecraft cakes as well because it's got all these individual squares on there. And you need to cut out enough to cover a 12 by 12 inch square. So you're going to need quite a lot and I choose to use three different colours. I'm now going to add some images just so that you can see exactly how many I cut out and how to stick them on there. So this is what you're aiming to achieve. Really simple, but extremely effective. Now you'll notice that I've gone over those circle marks that I had on there as a guide, but I still have part of the circle left. So just take the same sized cutter and place it on both sides so you know where to place your teddy bears. The next job is to create that really effective grass. Now you can make the grass in many different ways and I have chosen one of the most time consuming ones, however it is the most effective, using a sugar shaper. Now I prefer these ones where you can just gently squeeze the handle like so because otherwise they really hurt your hands. As you can see, the grass is slowly coming out of the bottom. This is just fondant that I have in my sugar shaper. I haven't used any gum paste. And then using a very, very sharp knife, you just simply cut it off. Cover all of the board. But if you choose not to use this method, I do have a grass techniques tutorial available on YouTube. So just follow to my YouTube channel and you will find it. It is one of the most popular. Now, how amazing and effective does that look? Remember, there are different techniques you can use, and I do have a separate tutorial for different edible grass techniques available on my YouTube channel, Rachel's Enchanting Cakes. Our next job is to add those refrigerated teddy bears. We are adding these now because everything's just going to be covered in buttercream. So simply pick them up, they've been kept in the fridge, and place them on the guides on the cake drum. We just need to add a few simple fondant accents to both of the bears before we can start piping that beautiful fur. Now as you can see, I'm going to start with the legs first. I've already decorated one of them, but I'm using very, very simple shapes. So for the legs, I start by rolling a very thick sausage shape and simply push it down on either side to make sure that it's quite flat. And then just use my fingers to place it directly onto the teddy bear. For the arms, I roll more of a cone shape and I wrap them around the teddy bear's body. For the ears, again, that's just a simple circle shape, which I then cut in half. But I haven't actually used a circle cutter for them. It's just completely all judged. And this is just fondant that I'm working with. Your fondant will go hard over time. And finally, for the small mouth section, I am going to speed all of this up for you, just so that you can watch me do it. But for the small mouth, 
Again, I've just taken a very small piece of fondant, placed it on my work surface, and then using my fingers, I've made it into a bit more of a heart shape. Added it to the cake, it will stick to the buttercream, and then just added a few details. So the button nose, I've added a smiley face. It's very easy to do a smiley face if you use your round cutter on those. And finally, just a few little dots where his fur would go. So I'm going to speed this section up for you because I don't want to bore you to death because then we need to get onto the important part of piping that buttercream. And if you've watched this tutorial correctly, as I mentioned at the beginning, you will need three batches of my buttercream to both crumb coat these cakes, fill these cakes, and then cover these cakes with fur. Now it's time to start piping that fur. Okay then, so for the fur I am using a large grass slash fur piping nozzle. Now I have coloured my buttercream grey and then taken a small amount out of the bowl and made it a slightly darker grey. In my disposable piping bag on the outside I have just filled it with the darker grey and then in the centre the light grey and it gives you a lovely two-toned effect. Now my buttercream recipe is perfect for piping with. You simply squeeze the bag gently but pull away at the same time and you will end up with this lovely fur effect. This is also great for the grass if you choose not to do it how I have. Take your time and you want to cover both of the bears. Now, one thing I have learned with the buttercream recipe is it's down to the quality of the butter. Lurpak is my favourite. However, in the summer, it does go softer, a lot faster and easier than Anchor does. So depending on the weather, in the summer, I tend to use Anchor. In the spring and the winter time, I tend to use Lurpak. But the quality of your ingredients is a must. Again, my buttercream recipe is in the description below this video. I will speed this up and show you what your bears need to look like before we add those perfect finishing touches. It really is as simple as that. Now the finishing touches, eyes. You just want two black balls the same size for each bear. I then add a bow. Now I am using a Karen Davis mould. You don't need to add a bow or if you don't have a bow mould, which will make life just that little bit easier, you can make your own by hand. And then they need their cupcakes. They're on a teddy bear's picnic. All I did for that was make a batch of 12 cupcakes because I used all of the cake batter to actually create these in the first place. And they have a cupcake each and I just turned a small amount of buttercream pink and a small amount blue. Just decorate your teddy bears how you want. But as you can see, they are so easy to make now. You will notice on my channel I have a very popular teddy bear tutorial with nearly 70,000 views. That used so much cake. It took ages to bake. With these you literally can bake one teddy bear cake in 50 minutes. It's just going to save so much time. The moulds are extremely high quality and remember what I explained earlier. You can order them now. I'm going to leave you a link for Molly's official website in the description below this video. Happy baking, guys, and I'll be back again soon.